Hello everybody, this is the Vixen. So in May 2000, I read an article about the upcoming movie Battlefield Earth. The journalist who wrote this thing said that it might be a little bit too early to say this, but I think we have just seen the worst movie of the decade. In the end, the Battlefield Earth was not one of the worst movies of the 2000s. I've actually done an entire list of that thing and the Battlefield Earth was a terrible movie. It was an absolutely atrocious movie, but it was still not bad enough to, you know, be one of the worst movies of the 2000s. I will say this now, that I think that by the end of the 2020s, I think that Zeros and Ones is going to be one of the top 10 or even top 5 worst movies of the decade. This is a movie that I will never, ever forget. It is one of the single worst movies I have ever seen in my entire life. This is a movie that is so bad, so appallingly awful, that I lack the oratory skill to explain it. But I will say this. This movie barely clocks in at 80 minutes. That includes a pretty lengthy, you know, credit sequence and stuff like that. Also including in the, those 80 minutes is a video message from Ethan Hawke himself when he talks about, you know, how he, much he liked working with the director of this movie. To that I say, huh? Is this, you know, a way for you to try to justify you making a terrible decision working with this dumbass? Or is it because they're holding your, you know, family hostage somewhere? Your family will be safe once you've recorded this message, Ethanok. Make it good. So what is Zeros and Ones about? We shall try to understand this absolute dumpster fire, this absolute freak of nature. Get ready because I'm about to unload some grievances about this movie. This is Zeros and Ones. Mostly fucking Zeros. Before we begin this review, I'm just going to describe to you a sequence in this movie that will sort of give you an idea on how terrible this is. After Ethan Nog leaves the apartment where he has been forced to bang this chick, we'll get to that later, uh, there is a motorcycle waiting for him. Now he was, you know, abducted or kidnapped or something like that, but, you know, the motorcycle guy seemed to know that he was coming and you know, Ethan Hawke just sits on, you know, behind him and they just go away. How did he know that there was going to be a motorcycle there? Was he waiting for him? Why haven't we been informed about this? I don't know. I'm going to say I don't know a lot in this review, I think, because it's very confusing. Anyway, so they go through these empty, badly littered streets with no dialogue and no explanation of where we're going. And they do this for about maybe one, one and a half, two minutes or something like that. That's pretty long time in a movie. And then they come to a bridge. Ethan Hawke, you know, dismounts the motorcycle. He uh, sets up a drone that flies away and the sequence is over. We never get to find out what happened to the drone. We don't know why he was doing this. And what the fuck was that? If you think that that was good filmmaking, you will enjoy the rest of this movie. And if that is so, I think you should be drug tested. Because what the hell was that? We never find out what happened to the drone. Because later we do get to see these helicopter shots that, you know, may or may not have come from the drone. But what was the point of the whole thing? Because it just is these dark, you know, establishing shots which established nothing. I think it was some, you know, part of the Tiber or something like that or some houses. Why? Why? What was the point of all of this? But anyway, let's, you know, take it from the beginning. Maybe we can get, you know, a little bit smartened up by this. So I think that Ethan Hawke is some kind of a military captain or something like that. He has arrived in Rome. Why is unclear. Uh, but he has come there and, um, you know, they're talking about stuff. I don't know what stuff, because how long does it usually take for you to understand the plot of a movie? Because usually 
after like 15 20 minutes even if you have no clue of what a movie is about before you see it eventually you will see okay so this is our uh, antagonist this is our protagonist this is our setup this is our story they're going to try to do this and the antagonist is going to try to do this and you know there is a conflict and you know it will be resolved in any way in the end i never figured out what the plot of this movie even was i was just what the hell is going on because Ethan Hawke mostly walks around at night and having, you know, discussions to himself about God, I think. Besides his inner monologues and conversation about God and stuff like that, he also has his, you know, small little camcorder in which he, you know, films things, for instance, uh, St. Peter's Basilica and stuff like that. And after that, another Ethan Hawke shows up in this movie. He's sort of, I think, some kind of a rebel leader or some criminal or something like that. They're interrogating him in this room and they're having confused conversation about stuff again. And he has a big outburst. And I was thinking, does Ethan Hawke have some kind of a twin? Or is it his brother? Or is it some kind of a hallucination or stuff like that? We never found out because we never saw him again afterwards. At least I don't think we saw the other Ethan Hawke after, you know, this interrogation sequence. Uh, there's also a woman that he has some kind of a relationship to uh, in Rome. They have an awkward sequence where they kiss each other with face masks on. By the way, this movie features quite heavily, you know, people sanitizing things and face masks and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the Asian women who has some uh, steamy girl on girl action, you know, tells Ethan Hawke that they are clean, which I gets means that they don't have any kind of virus but they never you know tell us what the virus is is this some kind of a you know breakout type of a movie is there a you know virus that is worse than covid19 that is lurking around or something like that or is this some kind of an allegorical uh, presentation of you know life under you know the lockdown era or stuff like that or was it just you know uh, the demands of rome that uh, all have to be wearing face masks to you know be able to shoot there or something like that Speaking of Rome, Jesus Christ, it looks bad. I've never seen Rome look more unappealing than in this movie, to the point where if, you know, this huge tornado just tore through the entire town, it would leave in its wake, um, I don't know, $50 billion of improvement. Jesus Christ, it looks bad. It looks so poorly lit. It looks dirty and grime and bad. I've been to Rome. There are, you know, places that doesn't look, you know, too savory, but not this sketchy I, it's weird and to top it all off all of a sudden when you think that this cannot be any stranger then saint peter's basilica goes boom it blows up together with a bunch of other buildings and everybody kind of reacts in this sort of yeah that sort of happened and they're talking about it like it didn't happen now this might be the case because they did have such a poor you know budget of special effects Seriously, the special in these effects are so cheap that, you know, the um, visual effects department they didn't have, you know, a pot to piss in or, or a window to throw it out of. It looks fucking awful. And then in the aftermath of the movie, when the movie's kind of wrapping up, then we see that nothing seems to have blown up. So was this a thing that happened in uh, Ethan Hawke's brain or something like that? Has he cooked up this one? Is this some kind of a weird you know, fantasy that he's having here in Rome. I don't know and I don't understand. And then we're having, of course, the Russians who told the bad joke and, you know, having these weird conversations. There is a lot of weird conversation, I'm just realizing in this movie. And then they sort of kidnap uh, Ethan Hawke and takes him to this room uh, where there is a woman on the bed. The Russians are saying to him that he has to have sex with her, but they will let him go if he's able to knock her up immediately. And I was like, what and they're telling him that we have this advanced uh, technology thing that will you know determine whether or not she's pregnant or not and i was like you're not helping what the fuck is this the movie is confusing it is atrociously acted it is woefully written it is terribly shot the, the guy who financed the camera crew he was so careful with his money i once saw him take up a five dollar bill out of his wallet and abraham lincoln didn't have a beard on it Jesus Christ, this movie is terribly shot. It looks awful. And just when you think that this movie couldn't be any stupider, then the movie kind of wraps up 
you know, when this old man blows himself up in this very nonchalant way and sort of, what? What was that? Uh, that is after uh, Ethan Hawke had his weird uh, Zoom call with some people we don't know who they are. And then Ethan Hawke is standing on this, you know, rooftop and he's looking out over, um, you know, Rome and the parks and stuff like that. And all, then all of a sudden, a bunch of people in you know, uh, military trucks, they jump out and they are pointing their guns at things. I don't know what they were pointing their guns at, but they pointed very good because all of a sudden they just disappear and families and dogs and, uh, you know, mothers and people come out and they're having a blast and they're playing in the parks without face masks, most of them. And I was like, what? And then the movie is over. I may have given you, you know, the ending to this movie. But I just want to save you the heartache of watching this movie. What the fuck is this? There is a pretty big chance that you didn't understand a single thing I just said and you didn't understand a single thing about this movie. But that is what I felt when I had watched this movie. This movie was so confusing. I was hoodwinked into watching this movie because at least Ethan Hawke has some kind of a name value and at least, you know, this was marketed as a action movie. So I think, okay, we have a modern action movie with Ethan Hawke. It might be, you know, interesting. Maybe, you know, something fun happens in this one. And I think that the most action thing that happened in this movie was, you know, when these guys, you know, come down to the boxing ring where the boxers are you know fighting each other and the waterboarding sequence when they are torturing this guy and tells him that they're going to interrogate him in five different languages or whatever it was but then it seems like they're giving him a mission of some kind we don't know what the mission is or why they gave it to him i was like what and then of course we have all the soldiers who you know jumps out of the military vehicles and points at things with their guns that's the, all the sort of action that you know is in this movie except of course for the bad explosions and all that good stuff so should you see this movie absolutely not this is an absolute freak of nature and one of the worst things i have ever seen it is difficult to explain how bad this movie is because despite this movie barely clocking in at 80 minutes they still you know only had maybe 30 to 35 minutes of people actually you know doing stuff otherwise there are long stretches of things where Ethan Hawke just walks around or you know travels in a car or filming this shit or you know doing things we don't understand and there was a point in this movie where I realized that this must be one of the single worst movies I've seen for at least, you know, five, six years or something like that, because this was so horrible. And the worst thing is that I've no idea what the point was. At least, you know, a bad movie like Fifty Shades of Grey or Breaking Dawn or Hassel Privatsbanana or something like that. At least they had a point that I could sort of understand. I could laugh at it. This was just... Eh. And Ethan Hawke, why are you so happy that working with this guy? He can't, you know, light his movies. He cannot, you know, shoot movies that looks any good. And, you know, his style is bleeding colors that distorts things and cannot write a sequence to save his life. I mean, I don't even know how to improve this because I think you have to burn the entire thing to the ground and just build this thing up again. Ethan Hawke is a very good actor and has put on some pretty good performance, but he looks completely lost in this movie. I don't even know if he knows what he's doing in this movie. I don't even know what I'm doing here trying to describe it because it is a movie that is undescribable. Can't you say anything positive? Okay, I am positive there is nothing redeeming about this movie at all. Fuck you, fuck this movie. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen. Through the decades, I have watched thousands upon thousands upon thousands of movies. 17 movies have gotten the rating of zero, which this movie gets. This is a rating that I pull out very, very rarely. I haven't watched a movie that I had gotten a zero for at least 10 years. That's how rare they are. This is almost a once a generation movie. This movie was so bad that I'm struggling to find anything that was redeeming about it. This was a confusing, ugly mess. 
with terrible acting, terrible writing, terrible cinematography, and nothing made any sense whatsoever. Jesus Christ. Has anybody actually seen Sears and Wanton can confirm that this movie actually exists? Because the more I think about it, the less this feels like an actual movie I've seen and more like a, you know, bad nightmare or something like that. Can anybody explain what the fuck this movie is about, shall we? Well, I'll see you next time for World so and so reviewing, well, such and such. Definitely something better than this one. I'll see you next time, everybody.